Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mirko and I'm your Italian tutor. And today we are going to talk about Don Giovanni. But this lesson is going to be different from the previous one. Do you remember about the Barber of Seville or La Traviata? Links above if you want to review them. Because this time we are going straight into the text. Because in this way you can learn new vocabulary but also you're going to learn the story behind it. Don Giovanni is an opera in two acts and the performance was in 1787. The music are written, composed by Mozart and the location is in Seville in the 17th century. The key terms here are seduction and crime. And just to give you a hint, you can use Don Giovanni as an adjective to describe a male, but he can be flirty and can deceive women to get something back. So you can say Mario è un Don Giovanni. Are you a Don Giovanni? Put in the comment section below. But let's go into the text. As you can see, uh, there is the Italian version and the English version. I'm going to put the link where I found the text, at least if you want to read the story. So the main character is Don Giovanni, okay? And his assistant is Leporello. So in the first scene, we have Leporello, who is basically outside the Commendador house, because basically he's guarding the place to see if someone is entering or if someone is basically disturbing Don Giovanni that is flirting with the Commendadore's daughter, Anna. Important details here, because then you're going to understand when we're going ahead with the story, Don Giovanni is masked, okay? So here we have Luporello that basically is like complaining, kind of, that he wants to be a better person. He doesn't want to be outside and doing this basically dodgy thing. And here, to say gentleman, you can say gentiluomo or galantuomo. Okay, you're going to ask, what is the difference between gentiluomo and galantuomo? So, gentiluomo, if you check in the dictionary, is basically someone that has aristocrats or regents. Or, however, even though maybe it's not a noble or aristocrats, for education or for his service, he gets to that status. Okay, in others that I check the, dif the differences, it says that gentiluomo is someone that basically behave according to the society dictations. Galantuomo, whereas, means honest, loyal, and actually, in some definition, they're going to say that gentiluomo, you can become. Galantuomo, you're born with that quality. And now, we're basically this kind of argument between Don Giovanni and Don Anna, because Don Anna is frightened by Don Giovanni. However, Don Giovanni loves to flirt. And here it's interesting, I don't know if you remember this word, folle. In the previous video, we learned follia, and it can be translated as lunatic, psycho. Uh, and you can say also to your friend, to say folle. Another word that is very important here, traditore. Traditore, betrayer. And actually, you can use it to indicate that maybe your lover cheated on you. You can say, tu sei un traditore. What happened here that uh, Anna's father, who is the commendatore, entered in the house and basically threat Don Giovanni. And they challenge in a duel, okay? So here, very important, let's read this part. This part. Così pretendi da me fuggir? Va, non mi degno, no. Battiti. Misero. Attendi se vuoi morir. Unfortunately, what happened here that il commendatore dai panni sneak out and escape and Anna's fiancé enter in the house and here basically we have a dialogue between Anna and Ottavio a ah, vendicar se il puoi giura quel sangue ognor this one is quite tricky also in Italian lo giuro, lo giuro lo giuro agli occhi tuoi lo giuro al nostro amor so basically Ottavio is swearing to Anna that is going to avenge Anna's father Let's go ahead with the story. So we have Leporello and Don Giovanni that are basically they are talking and Leporello is not basically enthusiastic about what he's doing and especially about Don Giovanni's life. So they have a kind of argument. But then Don Giovanni hear and see a female and obviously because he likes to flirt, he likes women, he was intrigued by that woman. So he went there, but unfortunately he found out that was Don Elvira. Don Elvira was one of his former conquests, if we can use this word. 
And Elvira is still suffering from what happened between Don Giovanni and her. But it's funny to read the story here. So, signorina, signorina, chi è la stelle che vedo? Oh bella, donna Elvira. Il cellerato mi ingannò, mi tradì. When Don Giovanni realized that is Elvira, he sneak out. And Leporello was there to explain, to try to explain the situation. And it's interesting because here Leporello basically is confessing that Don, she's not the first and not the last of Don Giovanni's, let's say, victim. Ah, consolatevi. Non siete voi, non foste, e non sarete né la prima né l'ultima. Guardate, questo non piccio libro è tutto pieno di nomi di sue belle. Ogni villa, ogni borgo, ogni paese è testimone di sue donnesche imprese. And he's going to give a list with numbers of all the women that Don Giovanni flirted with them. Interesting words here. Signorina, signorina, you're going to indicate someone that is not married. Uh, I wouldn't say to someone, signorina. It can be also tricky to use it because if you say to someone, signora, you can get offended. If you say signorina, you can imply that she's not married. You need to be careful to use it. It's not like in English to say miss or missus. Ingannare is a very interesting verb. Ingannare means deceive. Okay? And consolatevi. Consolare, you can translate it as comfort or console yourself. And sometimes, for example, let's say, especially now during lockdown that we are locked in, you can say mi consolo con la Nutella. Okay, now Leporello e Don Giovanni moved and they found a lot of people celebrating Zerlinda and Masetto's engagement. So here, <laughs> because Don Giovanni he can't cope not to engage or flirt with a woman, so he is trying to flirt with Zerlinda, trying to convince her not to marry him, because Don Giovanni is a noble. I mean, he can have a better life with him. So he see these people, he try to be friendly with everyone, like to invite them to the to his place, to organize a party. But then it's quite sneaky, so then he's trying with Zerlina to take her from her lover. Cari amici, buongiorno. Seguitata a stare allegramente, seguitata a suonare, o buona gente. C'è qualche sposalizio? Sì, signore, e la sposa sono io. Me ne consolo lo sposo? Io per servirla. Look at here, so Don Giovanni talking to Leporetto. Presto, va con costoro, nel mio palazzo, conducili sul fatto. Ordina che abbiamo cioccolata, caffè, vini, prosciutti. Cerca di divertir tutti. Mostra loro il giardino, la galleria, le camere. In effetto, fa che resti contento il mio masetto. Hai capito? So basically, he's encouraging Lavoretto to go to the place, organize a party with food, drinks, to show the place around, because it's a celebration day. But there is a meaning, because at least masetto goes to the palace, and the Giovanni can be free to interact with Zerlina. And here I select this passage because it's interesting to see the relationship between Don Giovanni and Zerlina. Al fin siamo liberati, Zerlinetta gentile, da quel scioccone. Che ne dite, mio ben, so far pulito? Signore, è mio marito. Chi? Colui. Mi pare che un onesto uomo, un nobile cavaliere, quale io mi vanto, possa soffrire che quel visetto d'oro Quel viso inzuccherato da un bifolcaccio, Bill, sia strapazzato. So basically what he's saying here is like, uh, I'm a gentleman, I cannot allow that you, with that very beautiful face, also beautiful charisma, is going to engage with someone that is uh, stupid or a clumsy oaf. And Zarlina is almost tempted to accept the offer, but... Yeah, I put like some sentences in Italian just to summarize because it's quite long. I didn't want to take a lot of space. Vera enters and tells Zerlina to be careful of Don Giovanni. And it's, she's starting saying what happened between them. That is not a very trustful person. She needs to be really careful. And she takes her away. So Anna and Ottavio arrive to ask Don Giovanni's friendship. But what happened when Elvira comes again? And she starts basically screditate Don Giovanni and saying really bad things on his account. But Don Giovanni is cheekier and knows how to move and starts saying that Elvira is mad, she's a psycho, and she took her away. And here there is an important sentence because you are going to ask, but Don Giovanni killed Anna's father. Yes, but Don Giovanni was masked, so Anna didn't see his face. 
However, while they are talking, she starts to realize like something like that that voice is familiar. This is the passage that I want to go through because it's really interesting. Don Ottavio, so morta. Che è stato? Per pietà, soccorretemi. Mio bene, fate coraggio. O dei, o dei, quelli è il carnefice del padre mio. Che dite? Non dubitate più. Gli ultimi accenti che l'empio proferì, tutta la voce richiamar nel cor mio di quell'indegno, che nel mio appartamento, she connected with Don Giovanni is the killer of his father, and is telling straight away to her fiancé. And then she explained exactly what happened that night. A very interesting word is per pietà. So per pietà we can translate it in two different ways. For pity's sake, or pietà you can also translate it. For example, if I, I'm going to say, quindi l'ha ucciso per pietà, you can translate it like it was a mercy killing. Also, for example, when you are discussing with your friend and you are going to say, oh, per pietà zitto. And then the other interesting word, very positive, especially during this time, coraggio, courage. I think in English you are going to say keep up. For example, if one of your friends maybe is down a little bit, is in the blues, you say coraggio, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. It's like, come on, I would say, come on, keep it up. Yeah. Now, new scene. So Don Giovanni threw a party and three masked figures who are Anna, Ottavio, and Elvira arrive. So it's a party, so Giovanni try again to dance with Zerlina, to take her to a specific room, and Don Giovanni takes her. Zerlina starts screaming, so the other people hear the voice and went there to save her. And here basically it's Zerlina inside the room that she said scellerato, scoundrel, and Anna, Elvira, Don Ottavio, they are, they are saying basically, let's break down the, the room, and Zerlina Help me, help me. Sono morta here, it's basically in the sense of I'm lost. You can say, for example, sono morto da ridere. Or when you're extremely tired, that you basically lie on the sofa, you say, oh, sono morto. But Don Giovanni, remember that it's cheeky? Because they suspected that it's Don Giovanni. He came out with a sword and le porelle. And he says, ecco il birbo che t'ha offesa. Ma da me la pena avrà. Mori, dico. So basically, is uh, put the blame on Leporello. But Anna, Elvira, and Ottavio are not stupid. They understood that there is something going on. In fact, here, Anna, Elvira, and Ottavio say, L'empio crede con tal frode di nascondere l'empietà. Basically, here, they are, going to, they are saying, He's trying to fool us, but we are not stupid. We understood that is Don Giovanni who took Zerlina and not Leporello. Obviously, then what happened with Leporello was like, let's say pissed off, like, why, why you did that? But Don Giovanni tried to give a sum of money to convince him, and Don Giovanni had an idea, a plan. He decided to swap clothes. Don Giovanni disguises Leporello, and Leporello become Don Giovanni. Why? Because at least Don Giovanni as Leporello, he can keep flirting with Zerlinda. And Leporello, disguised as Don Giovanni, can go to Elvira and ask forgiveness. And especially to take her away from the room. So it's like here it's get intriguing because then Leporello is talking to Elvira, is apologizing, but Ottavio and Anna are coming and are basically threatening to kill him. But Elvira said, no, 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 don't do that, please save him. But because Leporello was basically in a very bad position, he removed everything and said, I'm sorry, but this is my true identity. I'm Leporello and they beg for mercy, please. And then he ran away. We are almost at the end here. So what happened is that Leporello and Don Giovanni meet again. Don Giovanni basically is amused and basically is telling what happened. Like it is an adventure for him. But Leporello is quite worried. They are in a graveyard. But they can hear a voice that says, Di ride, finirai, ria dell'aurora. You're going to stop laughing before the dawn. Chi ha parlato? E Leporello. Ah ah. Qualche anima sarà dell'altro mondo che vi conosce a fondo. It can be maybe a spirit that is talking to you, that he knows you. But the Giovanni says, stop it. And he's taking the sword. And he says, who is, who is there? But the statue says, leave the dead in peace. But Giovanni thinks that if someone outside the graveyard basically is taking advantage of the situation, is trying to tease them. But then he's asking Leporello, can you read what is engraved in that statue? But Leporello said, I cannot read under the moonlight, because it maybe he couldn't see. 
non ho imparato a leggere ai raggi della luna. E then Leporello basically he admitted that that statue is the statue of the Commandador and something is going on here, so he's not very happy about that situation. Ma Don Giovanni basically is laughing and say, oh vecchio buffonissimo, digli che questa sera l'attendo a cenar meco. Uh, basically saying like, uh, tell him that I'm waiting for him for din to join me for dinner. Buffonissimo. We wouldn't use this one, but we would use buffone. Buffone, you can use it, it's quite common to say. I think maybe in English you wouldn't say buffon, but here you say, like, for example, when someone is, is exaggerating something or is saying a stupid thing, you can say, oh, say un buffone. Or, for example, when someone is too cocky, like, yeah, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this. Let's go at the end of the story. Don Giovanni is having dinner. Elvira again came in and is, she's begging him to change his behavior. But basically Don Giovanni does, doesn't give a damn about her or about what she's saying, so she's leaving. But sadly, she starts screaming. And Giovanni was like, what happened? Why is she screaming? And sent Leporetto to check. And in that moment, what happened is that the statues of the Commandador or the spirit of the Commandador came in. Obviously, Don Giovanni is not frightened and doesn't want to show that he's afraid, so he played the cocky one. The statue basically is asking him to repel. But Don Giovanni doesn't want to repel because for him he didn't do anything wrong. So here there is a scene very important that basically the statue is asking him, okay, grab my hand, and Don Giovanni is stuck and the flame appears with the demon and take Don Giovanni to hell. Da quel tremore insolito sento assalir gli spiriti, donde escono quei vortici di fuoco pien d'orrore. Don Giovanni went to hell, Leporello is basically under shock, and in that moment, Anna, Ottavio, Zerlinda and Elvira again came in because they want to ask for justice. But Leporello explained what happened, that Don Giovanni went to hell. So everyone is relieved because justice has been done. But there is an happy ending, so Zerlinda and Matteo went home together to have dinner, Anna and Ottavio got married, and Elvira decided to retire in convent. What about Leporetto? What do you think? Put in the comment section below. I really hope that you enjoyed this lesson. If you like it, remember to give me a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions or recommendations, please put in the comment section below. I'm going to post video about opera or literature one per month. And in the next slot, I'm going to talk about the Promessi Sposi because are from my area. If you want to check out my city, link above, because it's gorgeous. Remember to subscribe, to share the love, and I see you next time. Bye for now!